Hey guys, and welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle, and today we're gonna talk about twining. Twining is a really great structural stitch. It's great for starting and finishing your weavings. If you're not a huge fan of the hem stitch, it's a beautiful way to finish off the top of your weaving. It looks really pretty just on its own if you wanna use it as part of the design. And it's a way that you can create negative space in your weavings without compromising your warp. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So let's get started. I'm going to be using three millimeter cotton rope um, for this tutorial, but you can use all different thicknesses of rope, you can use yarn, whatever material you like, you can do twining with. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways how to do this, um, both by hand and with tapestry needles. And just to give you a few different methods so you can find the one that you like best. So I just have a length here of my rope. And I'm just going to start it off by looping it around this far warp string, um, just as a way to start off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the string sitting at the top here and I'm going to wrap it under the next warp string. Then we take this bottom piece of rope and wrap it above the last piece on the next warp string and we just continue on like that. You can see that we're twisting and wrapping around, oops, I went to the wrong string. We're twisting and wrapping our weft around the warp and this is what gives this stitch so much structure. So again, so this string is on the top, we're going to put this one above now and go around the next warp string. So basically each of the ropes are only going around every other warp string. And you'll start to see the pattern come through once we do our second row. But you're just going to continue to put this one above, wrap it around, and we're working from left to right right now. So your strings are going left to right as well. And you can keep kind of, you can see I'm getting a little loose here. So I'm gonna keep kind of tightening this up, not too much to distort our warp. Now you can see here, I'm just kind of trying to adjust the warp strings to make sure that they're sitting where I want to. And this first row you're definitely is going to be the hardest row and you're definitely going to want to just like keep adjusting as you go just to make sure it's spaced correctly. So now we've reached the end of our row. So now I'm going to just continue doing it this way and then I'm going to show you the tapestry needle method. So so I'm just wrapping my strings back around and, and we're going to just do the same thing. So wrapping one after the other, always going above. And I've just found this works better if, because I'm working from bottom up. So I'm always twisting from above. If you're working top down, you can do the opposite if you like. So again, just always wrapping, and it's just really twisting and wrapping our weft around our warp, which is what gives this stitch so much structure, and why it's a great way to create negative space in your weavings, which after we've done a few rows, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. Okay, so now you can see sort of that braided sumac stitch look that this twining has but twining is different because this pattern is created by two pieces instead of just one which what is what gives it such structure and what you'll see here and why this is such a great stitch for negative space is that it holds your warp strings from sliding side to side so you can see here now that that's all wrapped I can't just kind of slide my warp strings and distort my warp. So I'm going to show you the method of doing this with tapestry needles now. So this is where having two tapestry needles is super handy and I'm simply going to just 
thread both of these needles and I'm going to do a row of plain weave, so over one, under one, all the way across. And then I'm going to go in with my other string. First I'm just going to go around that first warp string just to get this started. And then what I'm going to do is everywhere that this warp, this weft string is going over a warp string, we're going to wrap this other string around, creating the exact same effect. This is the same stitch, it's just a different way of doing it. So I have my plain weave in there. So here we have our weft going over the warp string. So I'm going to take my needle and go under both that warp string and the weft and pull it through and just pull it nice and tight. And then we're going to do that again. So we're going to skip this one because the weft is going under that one. And then we're just going to go around those again. And then we're just going to continue to do that all the way across. One thing you'll notice is that this row looks, the, the pattern is coming through better and that just has to do with the twist of your yarn. So depending on the way that it's spun, um, the pattern will look a little more clear and more well-defined um, going one direction than it will the other because heading one way we're kind of unwrap or untwisting our yarn and the other way we're tightening it up which is making that pattern a little bit more predominant. All right, so now we're all the way across and we're just gonna do the same thing again. So I'm taking that first piece of rope again and I'm gonna just do plain weave once again. And again, I'm taking my other piece now and going around that first warp string just to get our rows started. And then I'm gonna keep doing that same technique where wherever the weft is going over the warp, I'm gonna put my needle underneath and string it through. All right, so now you can see that we've got a few rows of this twining. And here's what I wanna show you. So I'm gonna take two of those rows and I'm just gonna push it up to create, and this one down. And you can see now we have sort of this organic shape. So that's another way you can create organic shapes. If you haven't seen our organic shape weaving video, um, you can click the link above so you can watch that but this is another way to do that where you actually have a negative space of organic shape all right so one last technique that I want to show you with twining is using two colors to create a really unique effect so I'm just gonna take some more rope here so once again I'm gonna continue doing the tapestry needle method. So I'm going to just start doing my plain weave. I'm going to leave myself a tail so it can be tucked around later. And once again, we're just going to start wrapping. So that same method that I've already shown you, only now we've got two colors just to provide a different look. Okay, so for, in order for us to properly line up our colors, um, what we need to do when we go in with our second row of plain weave is whichever color you're weaving with, so I'm doing this rust color, I need to make sure that wherever in the last row it appears that that rust is going over a string, I need to make sure that it's going over that string again. So in this case, right here, so I'm putting the rust over top the rust. If you want to stagger the colors, of course, you can do that as well for a different look, um, but I want to get them to line up properly, so I'm gonna do it this way. 
So now I'm taking my mustard yarn and I'm gonna go over that warp first warp string again. And then we're gonna continue on with that same method. So wherever that orange is over a warp string, I'm gonna go under the warp string and the orange. And you'll see right away that two color pattern coming through and I think it looks really neat. You can see I'm always just continually pulling those strings tight so they really lock that warp string in place. And there is the twining created with two colors to give another unique look. And I'm just gonna pull down the plane just so you can really see that color. It almost reminds me of like a chevron friendship bracelet in a good way. <laughs> and I think it's really cute. And you could do that with any colors. And again, you could really mix it up with using a thicker rope um, and just really creating more texture and structure in your weaving. All right guys, so there is a couple different methods of twining and different ways that you can use it in your weaving, especially that negative space one. I'm excited to see what you guys do with this. And as always, you can tag me on Instagram. I love to see and share your work. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Welcome back to the Spruce and Linden. I got distracted looking at the chair to make sure it was out of the shot. <laughs> okay. Starting over again. It's not my favorite thing. Which is obviously a really fun way to.